Well, for more on the China-US trade agreement and the way forward, I spoke to Dan Eikenson. He's the director of the Herbert A. Stifel Center for Trade Policy Studies at the Cato Institute. I asked him what this deal means for America. Well, I think it's a good sign that uh, both governments are able to, to talk to each other and set a positive tone. You know, in the, during the election campaign, President Trump's rhetoric was pretty strident and it was disconcerting and I, I was very worried that there was going to be an eruption of trade tit for tat and it turned out that uh, so far that hasn't been the case. There hasn't been any imposition of duties. Uh, it's, everything's been so, sort of even keeled. Uh, but I think, you know, by and large, there's not a whole lot of substance to what was agreed. Yes, U.S. beef exports seem like they'll be able to resume uh, in China. The beef industry is very happy about that. Uh, the Americans are going to be able to import chicken that's made in China, cooked chicken. Uh, but if you look at the, the fine print, uh, there's a lot more to be done before the actual trade occurs. There's a lot of more, there's several more approval processes with respect to financial transactions, uh, and with respect to several of these liberalizing uh, agreements. But this is re reiterating and reinforcing the notion that both governments of the world's two largest economies need to get along and liberalize trade and, and make things work. Obviously, it's still early days uh, in this relationship, but we know that Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross called the agreement a Herculean accomplishment and said that the deal represented the biggest accomplishment in U.S. trade negotiations in the whole history of U.S.-China relations. A strong statement, some calling it an overstatement. What's your take on this? I, I would say uh, one export that this administration is going to be known for is hyperbole. Uh, there is, uh, I think that's a bit overwrought. Uh, this is something that has been worked on by previous administrations. We've had a strategic and economic dialogue going on throughout the, the Obama administration before this. Uh, it, that began in the Bush administration. So there are a lot of issues that have uh, popped up that have not been entirely resolved. And this is a legacy of some of those issues. Uh, so uh, certainly Wilbur Ross has contributed to the uh, progress, but uh, the effort predates him, and uh, there's still quite a bit more to be done. Let's also look at Trump's view on China. Obviously, a very different tone that we're seeing from him than we did see on the campaign trail. Why do you think it's softened, and could anything change that? Well, I mean, I think maybe some foreign policy considerations are, uh, are factoring into to Trump's decision to sort of engage uh, with China. Uh, I think maybe the Chinese see in Trump uh, a willingness to, to talk about numbers, targets. Previous administrations and, and most trade agreements, and I think rightly so, are about liberalizing trade by making the rules uh, uh, non-discriminatory so that companies can compete across borders. Trump and Wilbur Ross are very interested in specific targets. We want to reduce our trade deficit with China. We want to achieve trade balance or a trade surplus. And they like agreements where uh, the Chinese government can say, OK, we're going to buy X number of Boeing planes or s so many tons of American wheat. Uh, they like to be able to have those numbers. They're used to that. And, and I think, that to some extent, they, they're, uh, Beijing and Washington are able to speak the same language at the moment. So given this momentum that they're seeing with this, with this deal now with the, the meat exports, and also we know that the US delegation has accepted uh, to visit for the Belt and Road Forum, for all this momentum, what do you think is your outlook then for US-China relations when it comes to trade? I think it could, it could actually be quite favorable and uh, cooperative. There are, cl clearly are some issues there that, that suggest there are going to be clashes, issues over industrial policy. Uh, one mistake I think that the Obama administration made was to uh, out of hand reject this whole idea of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank uh, and to dismiss the OBOR, the One Belt, uh, One Road uh, idea. I think if the United States wants China to be, uh, in the words of, uh, of Robert Zellick, former USTR, a uh, more responsible stakeholder, uh, then we need to encourage uh, things like the Asian Investment uh, Infrastructure Bank and OBOR, and, and I think Trump will recognize that there may be some opportunities here for U.S. companies to participate in this infrastructure build-out, uh, and we should not oppose uh, uh, China's efforts, and we should even embrace China's uh, efforts to, to lead in the, the RCEP, uh, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. 
trade liberalization around the world is not only going to benefit the, the countries that are uh, a party to that agreement, but it will benefit the United States as well. So we should, we should embrace it.